right, today I'm going to have a look at these bumpers. Before we do that while we're here, I'll just show you this. This is the, um, the bonnet release cable. And it was, uh, it had this sheathing on it, which was all broken off and cracked. So I chipped all that off and I've replaced that with um, heat shrink, which that's tidied it up rather nicely. Anyway, back to these. So not even sure these are the right bumpers, but they're not a million miles away. Lots of dents. This doesn't fit anywhere, anywhere near. We've got big gaps under here. Um, holes where there shouldn't be holes. I've got four of these. I mean, the back bumper fits a little bit worse than this, but I might be able to do something with it. Um, so I shall try reshaping it. I wouldn't mind getting a little bit more bend here. I don't know if that's possible. So as it follows, follows the car, so it sort of follows there and then it comes away. Um, but I want to do it now before I get any paint on because I'll be putting it on and taking it off and flushing it around. Um, whether I can get those ends to line up. Um, but I'll, I'll be taking it down the plate to see if they'll strip the chrome off for me. Now I took these off that Grand Large, Grand Large. And they do appear to be different. Which way up does it go? I don't think they're right and wrong way. But that was a flush at the bottom, and yet that pretty much fits. And I have got the other one I took off here somewhere, not quite sure where it is, but that fits nice as well. So maybe these are the right bumpers. Those end brackets seem to line up pretty well, those. those, these are those. So I'm expecting when I take this off, it's going to be a different shape to this. I'll try and find that one. Well, there's the other one. I found it. And they are different. So, I wonder... This one is off a of Grand Large. Where this one's from, I've no idea. Um, but that'll be... I think it'd be much easier to change the shape of this than change the shape of the bumper. But even the, this um, captive nut, if you like, that looks like it sticks out too far. On this one, it's definitely recessed. I've tried these on the back, and these fit the back as well. So just deciding which ones to go with. Right, I have a plan. I'm going to save these off the Grand Lodge for the rear. They fit nice, they fit good. Both of those nuts sheared off. I had to uh, weld something on to get them out. And these, I'm going to, because this, this bumper fits worse than the back one, so I'm going to mess around with this, trying to get the bumper to fit. And then when I've got the bumper to fit, I'll make these to fit. And I think if I take this plate out and then put a cut each side just part way through, close it up, re-weld it and reshape it a little bit, I think that'll be good. I'm trying to figure out what's real and what isn't. I mean, that looks quite professional with a slotted hole and these tapered tapered ends and the other side seems to be the same. This is the bumper bar, the bumper iron. 
which has got a bent, a curved end to go into there, and yet the other end is completely flat. And yet those don't look homemade uh, when you consider everything else on this car. That's a heavy chunk of steel to to bend bend into that shape. Um, but that certainly needs I don't know something on it because that's that wobbles around. I made these for a different car, cast them in aluminium. So you can cast aluminium with a propane torch and some sand, and that was actually a bumper spacer. Now I could I could make something to go in there. Or I could try and bend the end a bit. Now this one's different again. That's only an M8 in there. And that looks like it's been brazed, I would say. Um, and I don't think M8's big enough, really. But that spreads even more. And if I compare it with the ones off the Grand Garage, they're miles different. Ah! Right, a bit more information. These are stamped in some way. I've got three. Well, God knows what that is. Presumably that's stamped. This one is made in two halves. It's been welded or brazed together. So the plot thickens. So I've got I've got three different sorts here. Well, like so many jobs here, you've got to do another job before you can do the job you want to. It's looking, this is the centre here. You can see we've got a bulge here. And uh, it's doing something else here. And looking underneath, we've got a dent, an upward dent there. And we've got the dreaded fibreglass everywhere. And we've got all this nasty edge here. So I'm going to get this off, straighten it, tidy it, get it back on, before I can match it to the bumper. I've taken these screws out, and these were wrong. I've had this off before, this piece.
Well, I still don't know how this comes apart. There's a, there's a bolt here, which I can't seem to reach from anywhere. I've not bothered with it that side. And it's not an original fitting. So it's going. <laughs> Well, it's off. We've got something going on here. Okay. Give that a clean up, see what we got left there. Let's see what happens with this. Let's see what this does. That shifted most of it, or the bulk of it anyway. Nice not to have all that dust in the air. Right, see where I'm going now. Metal's actually in good condition. I mean, it's all there. Well, it's got a hell of a dent in it. That'd be interesting, but it's taken quite a clout. That's where the bumper's uh, knocked in there. So I'll go back to that bumper later and just see if that, if that could be the same bumper. Okay, so I've screwed it down to a piece of wood because that's the right length. I don't want it to spread any, particularly from there. I've thrashed that down a bit. I think I'm going to put some heat on here. That's really quite a tangled mess.
twice I've been pondering this. I've stranded out quite a bit, although it doesn't still looks um, still looks completely wrong. Um, this side is not too bad. There are some small dents. So I'm taking this side as being more correct. So that leaves me a, a bulge. It's sort of all right there, and then it starts. Um, so I, I suspect they've just thrashed it out from the inside, and it's stretched. Uh, so I think what I'm going to do is, is try and heat shrink some of this area here before I cut anything out here because this is a holding it all together and stopping going floppy and then I'll I'll take a small patch that shape and cut this rubbish out here something like that um, and then I can work all these out a bit better I think still need a skimmer filler but hopefully it'll be a lot better this dolly will show extent of that bulge I mean there I think you can see that that fits perfect all the way along there but when we get to here we start to get a gap there's probably two mil under that under the center and there where the damage is we've got four mil and it's still still gapped and sort of there it becomes okay so we're looking here to here I've got here a sandbag and a lead weight. It's going down.
think I've gone as far as I can with that lumpy mess in place. So I'm going to take that out.
I'm just using the dolly as a guide. That's actually come good now. That matches the other side, so that was holding in all that, all that badness. Right, so I've, I've bent it that way and I've hammered out the middle to get a little bit of crown. And that fits, that fits pretty nice. So I'm going to tack it with MIG. And I'm going to have one last go at TIG. I'm not going to show you. Let's we'll see how it goes. <laughs> 